Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be applying sample distributions to do some more problems involving bell curves. So let's get started. So here's a hypothetical problem. Suppose you want to find the probability that the average IQ of 10 people is greater than 102. How do we approach this? Now I want to mention that this hypothetical problem is actually different than finding the probability that all 10 people have an IQ greater than 102. That problem can be done using some basic understanding of probability, but this is a little bit more complex because we're talking about the probability that the average of these 10 people is greater than 102. So now that you have an understanding of what kind of problems you can expect, we're going to jump over to the computer and see how we can apply sample distributions to some examples. So I'll see you there. All right, so I really want to work out this example of finding the probability that the average IQ of 10 people is greater than 102. Now, we already know a lot about the IQ bell curve. There's a reason I've been dealing with the IQ bell curve for so long. Uh, we know that it has an average of 100 and a standard deviation of 16. Now keep in mind, the standard deviation is the population standard deviation, meaning that the population is spread out. People have different IQ scores, and we know how to find the probability that someone has an IQ greater than 102. We know how to do that, but we're not asking to find the probability that someone's IQ is greater than 102. We're talking about finding the probability that the average 10, the average of 10 random people is greater than 102. So this problem changes a little bit because, let me fix that real quick, sorry. This problem changes a little bit because if you take the average of 10 people, you would expect to get numbers that are averages that are uh, averages of 10 people to be really, really close to 100. Like it would be really, really, really rare to get an average IQ of 10 people to be like 130. That would be absolutely insane. That would mean that all 100 people have really, really high IQs. So um, that's really, really unlikely. What's more likely is that your average of 10 people would be really close to 100. So in this case, my bell curve looks really, really squished because my average is still 100. I should expect to see that the average of these 10 people is really close to 100. But in this case, my sample standard deviation should be relatively smaller because I, sh I should expect to see my average IQ of these 10 people to be closer to 100 rather than if I took a random person and saw that their IQ was not close to 100. Again, the, uh, to give another uh, understanding of this, the idea is the people with the higher IQs wash out the people with the lower IQs. And so you should see an average that's really close to 100. And so this standard deviation is much smaller. Now, if you remember from the last lecture, there's a way to calculate this. You take the population standard deviation, which was 16, and divide that by the square root of your sample size. Now, how many people are you looking at here? In this case, it's 10. So 16 divided by the square root of 10 is 5.06. So that means that this data is not spread out as spread out as the last bell curve, the IQ bell curve, which has a standard deviation of 16. This bell curve is a little bit different because we're looking at sample size sample averages where the samples are size 10. So the, the standard deviation in this case is 5.06, much smaller, much, much smaller, like a third smaller. So now um, we have the statistics of this bell curve and we're trying to find what's the probability that my average is greater than 102, which can be measured by the area of this region. Now this is great practice from great review. Um, we need to find the corresponding z-score. So here I have the z-score bell curve, which is pretty spread out. I mean, technically, 
it has a standard deviation smaller than this, but that's beside the point. Here we have zero, our average is zero, our standard deviation is one, and we're trying to find the corresponding z-score to an IQ, an average IQ of 10 people being 102. So we're trying to find that z-score. Well, we can calculate that z-score using this formula, z equals x, which in this case is 102, minus my average, which is 100, divided by my standard deviation. But my standard deviation is not 16 this time. My standard deviation for this bell curve is 5.06. And that's the only difference with this problem, guys. The only difference is that the standard deviation is much smaller because if I have 10 people grouped together, I should expect IQ averages to be closer to 100. Now this number is, Point three four, point, sorry, point four zero, which means that this z score right here is point four zero. Now we're trying to find the area to the right of this z score, which is marked by this region right here. But unfortunately, my z table will only tell me the area to the left of any z score. But let's do that anyways. I'm gonna pull up my z-score real quick, my z-table, and look at my z-score of 0.4, which is right here, 0.6554. So let's go back to my bell curve and say that this is 0.6554. What is this area right here? This area right here, the area to the left is 0.6554. 554, which means that this purple region is just everything left over. This purple region would be 0.3446. So if you add up the blue region plus the purple region, you'll get the number one. And you can test that if you'd like. There we go. That looks like more like a three. All right, so if that area is 0.3446, then this area is 0.3446 which means that this is 0 0.3446. So it's really, it's kind of unlikely to find that the average IQ of 10 people is greater than 102. That's slightly unlikely. Uh, the probability is exactly 34%. Now, if we took, if we pulled together like 100 people, this number would be even smaller because this standard deviation would be smaller, making this number smaller, making this z-score bigger, making this area bigger, making that area smaller, making that answer smaller. There's a lot going on there, but the idea is that the more people you add to your sample, the more unlikely it is to get an average greater than 102 because your averages should get closer and closer to 100 as your sample size gets bigger, most likely. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next video. You just watched a video from Amore Learning. We provide free math videos and we offer many online courses. We also provide free math tutoring via YouTube Live every Thursday and Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video to get access to all of our free content. And put a comment in the comment section if you have any math questions. Check out all of our courses on amorelearning.org.